Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be doing my top 32 ranked running backs for fantasy football in 2021. I have already done my top 12 running backs and my top 24 ranked running backs for fantasy football, so in those videos, you're going to get an in-depth look into running backs 1 through 12, and then obviously running backs 13 through 24 in the other video. This video mainly focuses in on running backs 25 through 32, so if you want a more in-depth look on the prior running backs, make sure you check check out that video. If you guys do end up enjoying this video of my breakdown of running backs 25 through 32, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below because not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 fantasy football leagues. I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and you're going to appreciate it as well because I put out that content every single day to really help you guys win your league. So without further ado, let's get into it. From 1 to 10, I'm just going to kind of read the names off and then again, 25 through 32 is going to be the real big breakdown happening. So running backs one through 10 goes as follows. Christian McCaffrey is my running back one, followed by Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, A. A. Ron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, and Cam Akers. I honestly think the most controversial take inside of my top 10 running backs is probably Jonathan Taylor down there at number eight. I think a lot of people are very, very high on Jonathan Taylor for the 2021 NFL season. Now, I still think Jonathan Taylor is going to be good, right? Because I ranked him as a top 10 running back, but I am a little bit worried about what this offense looks like with Carson Wentz under center. Will Carson Wentz be the Wentz of last year, or will he be the Wentz of the past? As well as the fact that Marlon Mack will be healthy, taking away some of the touches. Uh, the offensive line should still be solid, so I think Jonathan Taylor will be a great running back this year, but I'm not too sure about drafting him inside the top five like many people have been doing at least as of recently. Now, on to running backs 11 through 20. At number 11, we have running back Austin Eckler of the LA Chargers at 12. We have Antonio Gibson. 13 is Najee Harris, followed by J.K. Dobbins, Joe Mixon, Chris Carson, DeAndre Swift, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Kareem Hunt, and David Montgomery. Now, I think a lot of people every single year are going to be sleeping on Chris Carson, who is my running back number 16. I have really harped on this a lot in my channel, how people don't like to draft guys guys that are just not super sexy, right? Because you draft Seattle running back Chris Carson, and he's not super sexy. He's never really going to have that top five potential, but week in, week out, the Seattle Seahawks look to run, run, run the ball down the defense's throats, and not too many people talk about Chris Carson, so I think he's a very interesting talking piece. If you guys have any questions about any of these running backs, let me know down below. I'd love to talk about it down below in the comment section. Next up, we got running backs 21 through 24. Before we start the in-depth breakdown, that is Miles Sanders, Miles Gaskin, Mike Davis, and Josh Jacobs. I really think that Miles Sanders is going to be a guy that I don't really want to be talking about all that much on my channel because, frankly, I don't have too much of a feel about Miles Sanders. I don't love Miles Sanders. I don't hate Miles Sanders. I think if he ends up on my team, I'm not running up to the draft board smacking, I love Miles Sanders, but I might end up drafting him and being like, eh, I got Miles Sanders on my team. That's honestly how I feel about him. Now, on to running backs 25 through 32. We begin here with running backs 25 through 32. So at 25, we have Chase Edmonds running back of the Arizona Cardinals. Kurt Underdog ADP 65.5. Five. Now, Chase Edmonds, a couple of weeks ago, I was relatively high on thinking that, you know, with this Arizona Cardinals offense being so solid, I think that the door is pretty open with Kenyon Drake leaving the team for Chase Edmonds to have some pretty big fantasy success on the team. I would have had him ranked as a top 24 running back, but now he's kind of just peeking in. He's not in there, but he's looking to get into the top 24. Finishes running back 25 in PPR last year, 28 and half PPR, and running back 30 in standard playing in six. 16 games last season, but he only did end up starting in two games, averaging 10.5 PPR points per game, 8.8 .8 half PPR points per game, and 7.2 standard points per game, meaning from a points per game perspective, he was ranked running back number 36 in PPR, 37 and half PPR, and number 43 in standard. So Chase Edmonds had an all right season, but what can you expect out of a running back who has basically been cucked by Kenyon Drake, even when Kenyon Drake wasn't playing the greatest, and most people would have told you 
to put Chase Edmonds in. They never ended up doing that and giving him a full role. Even with Kenyon Drake out, it didn't seem like they were fully committed in on Chase Edmonds during those games. So that's something that really does worry me. Are they truly committed to giving Chase Edmonds the rock like a workhorse role that he could be in? Or are they more concerned with just giving it to Chase Edmonds half the time, giving it the other times to James Conner? And without an injury to one of these running backs, neither of these guys really finishes all that high. Now, I think the upside for Chase Edmonds is relatively high due to how solid this offense is and due to the fact that he did make big splashes last year at points. I'm not saying that he was really just a guy that you wanted to start every single week, but he did have some games where you would have been pretty happy to have started him, especially like week number 15 up against Philly, scoring 15 points. He scored 15 points up against Carolina, 14.9 up against Seattle, week number 11. So he did have some top 20 games throughout the season, but again, nothing super special, but that's because he was behind Kenyon Drake. So your thought process on Chase Edmonds basically has to be on what you think about how this running back room is going to work. If you believe that Chase Edmonds is going to be getting a majority of the targets and like 50% of the rushing opportunity in this backfield, then Chase Edmonds should be pretty solid, right? Because Edmonds last year had 68 targets, one off of being very nice with ranking 6th highest at the running back position. He had 53 targets, ranked 7th at the running back position, 402 receiving yards, 6th highest at running back, only having 97 carries, 448 rushing yards, and 5 total touchdown. So you have to think, do you believe that James Conner is not going to be getting a majority of the targets and that Chase Edmonds will and that Chase Edmonds will be getting enough touches to qualify, quantify, I believe would be the word for this one, to draft him as your running back number 25. Now, again, this is kind of the range of running backs where all the big guys already want went. Running backs one through 23, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Josh Jacobs, and after that, I'm a little bit more uncomfortable. But hey, I think Chase Edmonds certainly does have tremendous upside, but I think it's going to take an injury to James Conner for him to fully see that workload in Arizona. Next up, we have one of my favorite later round running backs, and that is Damian Harris. He is probably my favorite running back on this list due to how safe he is, but I don't think he necessarily has the upside of Edmonds because I feel like New England is always going to be that team that just does a running back by committee, right? It's not really a running back by committee, but it kind of is because they use so many different guys every single game. Damian Harris, running back of the New England Patriots, underdog ADP 84.7. Originally, I had Damian Harris ranked much lower, but then I had to give my head a shake and truly think about it because the biggest knock on Damian Harris is the fact that this guy, frankly, got zero targets last season, seven whole targets, five receptions on last season, 52 receiving yards. In fantasy football, as a running back, you want to be drafting a running back that has some receiving upside, like Chase Edmonds, something that Damian Harris doesn't necessarily have at the NFL level, but if you go back and watch him play at the collegiate level at Alabama, he was able to actually reel in some passes. So the question is, will he be able to get the pass catching opportunity in the NFL level this season to be able to elevate him past uh, being a running back three and into being a potential running back two? In 10 games last year, Damian Harris finished his running back 53 in PPR, 50 in half PPR, and running back 44 in standard, averaging 9.1 PPR points per game, 8.9 half PPR points per game, and 8.6 standard points per game. Meaning, from a points per game perspective, he was running back 39 in PPR, tied with Wayne Gallman, Latavius Murray, and Jamal Williams, running back 36 in half PPR, and running back number 33 in standard. For his rushing numbers, he had 137 carries, 691 rushing yards, 52 receiving yards, and two total touchdowns. So, Damian Harris last year, basically, was just a guy you played because you knew he was going to get 10 fucking points every single year. Now, this was not his rookie season, which some people may end up mistaking him for because he barely ever played in 2019. His actual rookie season 2020 was his sophomore season but maybe we see a junior season true breakout for Damian Harris that's kind of why I have him ranked this high because I believe that the Patriots are going to be a much better team in 2021 backed by a much stronger defense which means they'll be able to run the ball a lot more which will obviously get the ball into Damian Harris's hands some more so let me know down below I'd be interested to see who you guys actually like better Chase Edmonds or Damian Harris for me it's really fucking close
It's really fucking close. I have Chase Edmonds ranked one above him, but some people are very heavy on board with the Damian Harris train. A lot of fantasy football analysts are talking about him, so he definitely deserves his spot inside of the top 30. Next up, we have Raheem the Dream Mostert of the San Francisco 49ers. In eight games, finished as running back 48 in PPR, 48 in half PPR, and running back 47 in standard, averaging 12.5 PPR points per game, 11.5 half PPR points per game, and 10.5 standard points per game. Meaning, from a points per game perspective, he was running back 29 in PPR, 28 and a half PPR, and running back 27 in standard. So Raheem Mostert is also in one of those situations where there's going to be a lot of guys touching the rock, but I believe, and based upon the reports I have read, that Raheem Mostert is going to be getting the first crack at it when it comes to getting rushing opportunities in this 49ers offense. Currently coming off the board as underdog ADP 78 now, I do normally talk about the running back by committee, but if you guys have been watching for a little bit of time, I have dubbed the 49ers a running back by orgy. They give the ball to so many guys, and if Trey Lance is in the lineup, it is going to be even more. Now, going into the offseason, I thought that Jeff Wilson would have been the guy to draft for the San Francisco 49ers because he had so many flashes last year of greatness, but now with him potentially missing probably up to four weeks of the 2021 NFL season, I think that gets Raheem Mostert right in the door to get the first crack at it and to be able to succeed early on in the season. And with the way that the 49ers use their backfield, they like to give it with the hot hand approach, meaning that, hey, if Raheem Raheem Mostert plays quite well, he's going to keep getting touches. If he starts playing like shit, then they're going to start giving him less touches. Then maybe he starts playing good again, then he becomes the hot hand again. It's the hot hand approach. That is something that teams that don't have that workhorse running back like to use. Some other teams, they don't go with the hot hand approach. They go with the fuck you approach, which is what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Last year, Raheem Mostert had a grand total of 19 targets, 16 receptions, and 156 receiving yards, 104 total carries for 521 rushing yards, and three total touchdowns. Now, obviously, those stats aren't super sexy, but he only ended up playing in half of the games for the San Francisco 49ers last year. So basically, when you're drafting Raheem Mostert, you're banking on the fact that the 49ers really like to run the ball, and you're banking on the fact that Raheem Mostert ends up being the guy. I understand why a lot of people might be not drafting Raheem Mostert, right? And waiting two rounds later and drafting Trey Sermon, but again, Trey Sermon is a rookie out of the Ohio State. We have not seen him do it at the NFL level yet, and I do believe that since he's a rookie, people are going to get down on their knees and suck him off and talk him up until he moves up and up and up and up until he's getting drafted ahead of Raheem Mostert, and then you end up getting him out of value. So right now, Raheem Mostert would be the guy that I am looking for out of the 49ers backfield by the time that we're talking in August, maybe... You know, Mostert isn't the guy, and we know that Trey Sermon's going to be the guy week one, that in that case, you completely switch this around, and then Trey Sermon is sitting up here inside of the top 30, but based upon what I know right now, I feel like Mostert should end up being the guy week one for the 49ers. Next up, we have Mr. Ronaldo Jones of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. So, Ronald Jones of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, currently coming off the board on underdog 80. P 101.0. Now, going into last year, I was a huge fan of Ronald Jones until they traded for, not traded for Leonard Fournette, right? Because the Jaguars cut a guy who played amazing, cut him, and then James Robinson obviously plays good, but they cut him because things just weren't working out there. He goes to Tampa Bay. He's not really getting too many touches. Him and Bruce Arians are kind of in some type of mental gymnastics war, it seems like, because Bruce Arians, at the end of the season, comes out that Bruce Arians was going to cut Leonard Fournette because he wasn't doing these certain things correctly. But that that last year, we basically had a Tampa Bay team where it was running back by fuckery, like I said earlier, because Bruce Arians will tell you one week that Ronald Jones has the stranglehold of this backfield, like the big show grabbing your ass around the neck, something like that. That's what it is. It's going to be Ronald Jones, and then boom, it's not Ronald Jones. The next week, it's Leonard Fournette, and then it's not Fournette, then it's Jones, and you're just so confused every single week, getting cycled around by Bruce Arians post-game takes, post-game interviews. So, when you're drafting Ronald Jones, you have to hope that for it to really pay off, for him to really be good, 
for something to happen to Leonard Fournette. You would need Uncle Lenny to get hurt for that to work out. Now, again, I don't hope for injuries. I'm not saying that. Underdog ADP 101.0 for Ronald Jones. But what I am saying is that without an injury, you are going to be stuck in this running back by fuckery committee where you have no idea what to do each week. I talked about it a lot last year. You could probably look up Notorious Fantasy Football Starter Sit Running Backs Week 10. And I probably would have told you that I don't know who to start on that team, that I think one of them is going to be good, but I don't know which one will be good because every week it seems to be different. They're spinning us around like some meatspin.com in 14 games. Ronald Jones finishes running back 20 in PPR, 16 half PPR, and 15 in standard, averaging 13.3 PPR points per game, 12.3 half PPR points per game, and 11.3 standard points per game. Meaning from a points per game perspective, he was running back 24 in PPR, 22 and half PPR, and running back 20 in standard, tied with Kareem Hunt. Now, the reason why I have Ronald Jones ranked ahead of Leonard Fournette is because personally, I I believe that Ronald Jones is a much better running back than Leonard Fournette. Spoiler alert, Leonard Fournette is also in the top 32, so we're going to be talking about him a little bit later. Ronald Jones last year had 192 carries, almost 1,000 yards, 978 rushing yards. He had 8 total touchdowns, 42 targets, 28 receptions, 165 receiving yards. Now, neither of these guys, Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette, frankly, can catch the pigskin. It seems like... That was much of the commotion as to why guys are getting put in and out of the game because Leonard Fournette drops a ball, they put Ronald Jones in, then Ronald Jones drops a ball, and Tom Brady looks like he is going to execute Order 66 on these motherfuckers because he is so sick of this. And that's really what was kind of happening. That's why we saw that running back big cycle last year. So I like Ronald Jones the most out of those two running backs. I think that, to be honest with you, Half of the people probably watching this video think Leonard Fournette is better. And I understand why you would think that because of how good he was in Jacksonville. But I think at Tampa Bay, this is Ronald Jones' backfield. But it could easily also be Leonard Fournette. So it's really a big toss-up. That's why Ronald Jones is going as pick 100, not like pick 50. Because if he was the guy for Tampa Bay, if Leonard Fournette was gone, then Ronald Jones would be the easiest pick inside the top 50. Because I really believe that being a running back on a team that is so good, like the Bucks, who are going to be up in games and having to run the ball later, is great. But... That's just not the truth. It's because Mr. Leonard Fournette, Uncle Lenny, is still there. So next up here, we have running backs 29 through 32, obviously, to close out the video. At number 29, we have my guy, James Robinson of the Jacksonville Jaguars, finishing his running back 7 in PPR last year, 7.5 PPR, and 7 in standard playing in 14 games. From a points per game perspective, he ranked 7th in PPR, 8th and half PPR, and running back 7 in standard. Now, James Robinson was a guy that I was beating the drum so heavily for. I was saying James Robinson is going to have a repeat season to what he had in 2020 because he should be the guy in this backfield. But Urban Meyer took his phone, called up Travis Etienne, and told him he was going to be a first-round pick this year and flicked James Robinson like a fucking booger across the room. And it honestly really made me mad. If you guys were there for my draft live stream, when when they drafted Travis Etienne, I felt like I got shot directly in the heart because I was a huge fan of James Robinson. I wasn't going into last year. I had no idea who the fuck undrafted running back out of Illinois State James Robinson was, but he proved me and every single other person who told you to pick up Divine Ozigbo over him wrong, and I thought this was going to be a stranglehold of a backfield scenario. They bring in Carlos Hyde, but I'm like, Carlos Hyde will do fucking nothing. It's not going to matter at all. But obviously, when they draft Travis Etienne, this takes Robinson from potentially finishing as a top 12 running back all the way down here to running back 29. Now, I assume, just like with Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette, this is going to be a split decision on who you like better, James Robinson or Travis Etienne. I'd be interested to know that down below in the comment section. But I believe that James Robinson will get the first lick at the touches. Why do I think that? Because I believe that we saw what James Robinson did and he looked really good. We haven't seen ETN at the NFL level yet, but this could be completely 
completely wrong. And that's why these guys are just upside shots. James Robinson is an upside shot that Travis Etienne completely forgets how to play fucking football and plays terrible. And then James Robinson is getting all these touches as pick 80.6 based upon current underdog ADP. So with James Robinson, he's a player that I really like. I think he's a very talented player, but his upside is completely kerpunkled by the fact, if that's even a word, by Travis Etienne last year. These stats will make you sad because of how good James Robinson was last year. 60 targets, 49 receptions. He had 344 receiving yards. He had 240 carries, 1,070 rushing yards, and 10 total touchdowns. And Urban Meyer told this guy to pack his bags and fuck right off, basically. That's what he told him. And it's tough. Really is tough. But I think James Robinson still could get enough touches to make him fantasy relevant, but we'll have to see. We really will have to see because one of these guys could definitely be straight up league winners if the other one ends up getting hurt. Next up at 30, Travis ETN. Now, obviously, this guy doesn't have any NFL stats, but he does have some collegiate stats. Currently coming off the board, underdog ADP 48.0. Now, he is going to end up getting drafted highly again because of the rookie running back hype. He's going to go way higher than James Robinson, and I'm just not going to take that shot. I think that he could be legitimately involved in the pass catching game in this offense and be pretty solid but I also understand that when you're at pick 48.0 there's a lot of other running backs a lot of other running backs that I feel are much safer than Travis Etienne in an offense that is so new with a head coach who not a lot of people love in Urban Meyer so there's a lot of unknowns here and to me that's why I'm not really looking to draft Travis Etienne 5 foot 10 out of Clemson 22.3 years old in college this guy's a fucking workhorse 2018 2019 over 1600 rushing yards he has 20 plus touchdowns in those seasons 26 in 2018 23 in 2019 he has a bunch of receptions and a bunch of receiving yards in 2019 432 receiving yards on 37 receptions so clearly this guy can be a legitimate threat to James Robinson but at the price you're paying for him you would have to hope James Robinson slips in the fucking shower tomorrow that's what you gotta hope now I don't hope that I don't hope that but what I'm telling you is that you're just paying way too heavy a price for such an unknown in my opinion But Nick, Travis Etienne's great, I know. I will never tell you that this is a bad player. You look up Travis Etienne versus, or Travis Etienne highlight tapes, you watch that, your nuts, you're not your nuts, your fucking pants are going to be soiled with that sweet, sweet nectar. But, but, is he worth paying that price? I don't think so. I really do not think so. And I I, obviously I don't think so because he's my running back number 30. At 31, we have Uncle Lenny of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers underdog ADP 92.9 compared to Mr. Ronald Jones, who was 101.0. So people are more on the Lenny train right now. Maybe you guys aren't, but the audience drafting on underdog clearly is. So six feet tall, 228 pounds, 26 years old for Mr. Mr. Uncle Lenny in 13 games with only three starts, finishes running back 35 in PPR, 38 and a half PPR, and 39 in standard, averaging 10.2 PPR points per game, 8.8 half PPR points per game, and 7.4 standard points per game. From a points per game perspective, he was running back 37 in PPR, 37 and a half PPR, and 40 in standard, tied with Gus, Bus, and Reggie Bonafon. A lot of people are going to remember Leonard Fournette for playoff Lenny, Super Bowl Lenny, where in the playoffs, This guy literally went balls to the wall, balls deep into the defenses. And it was great. It was awesome. I like playoff Lenny. But during the regular season, it was up and down. Week one, 67th best running back. Week two, running back three. Then running back 54, 14, 26, 25, 41, 28, 46, 11, 17, 49. So it was really up in the air for Leonard Fournette. Now, I think that he is still a pretty solid NFL running back, and if something was to happen to Ronald Jones, then bada-bing, bada-boom, Leonard Fournette's probably a top 15-ish running back week in, week out, because they're not going to commit to Giovanni Bernard uh, back there, but I still do think that Ronald Jones would be the better option when you're drafting for fantasy. Looking at his stats from last year, he had only 97 carries, 367 rushing yards, 47 targets, 36 receptions, as well as six total touchdowns and 233 receiving yards. Now, I know I might have told you he had 36 receptions, but he also had five drops. Both him and Ronald Jones were 
down tremendous when it came to catching the ball. They were dropping the ball left and right. So maybe if one of these guys really ends up being really good at pass catching, they will stay on the field longer, and that'll end up being the guy. But right now, both of these guys are definitely just deeper down shots, and I do like Ronald Jones more. Final guy here, a fall from grace for my guy Melvin Gordon, running back of the Broncos. Now, Melvin Gordon, a couple of weeks ago before the NFL draft, I was couple of weeks ago the draft was a while ago at this point which is pretty crazy but yeah back then before the draft I was all on board with Melvin Gordon I was like why are they going to draft another running back Philip Lindsay is gone we can do our little dance here we're happy we're pumped because Philip Lindsay is gone and then boom smack directly in the face I'm sorry that I screamed right there but just right in the face knockout power from Mike Tyson Javante Williams and it wasn't even like Javante Williams fell to them so they had to pick him they went on their phone and dialed up the number to the Falcons I believe they called them and they traded up past my Dolphins to take Javante Williams Melvin Gordon currently coming off the board at 94.3 and this is going to be yet another glorified running back by committee a glorified dual headed backfield now there is the thought process that some people are spitting out right now that could be true it would be big if true that may be they run the tires off of Melvin Gordon. They paid him all this money. You run, 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 run with Melvin Gordon. And then in 2022, it's Javante Williams season. But then my kind of punch back at that is that they didn't do that last year. They paid Melvin Gordon all this money and Philip Lindsay was still getting touches. And it's basically a 50-50 backfield under this head coach. So I don't really... I don't know. I just, I just am not a big fan of Melvin Gordon. In 15 games, finishes running back 14 in PPR, 13 in half PPR, and 13 in standard. From a points per game perspective, he was running back 25 in PPR, 24 in half PPR, tied with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and running back 22 in standard, tied with Drake, Eckler, and Swift, averaging 13.2 PPR points per game, 12.2 half PPR points per game, and 11.1 standard points per game. Now, again, without Javante Williams, this guy would have been a beast because Lindsey was hurt for a lot of last year, and he was getting a lot of opportunity on this team 215 carries 986 rushing yards 44 targets 32 receptions 10 total touchdowns and 158 receiving yards those are all very good numbers but at this point I'd rather draft Javante Williams later I would I'd rather take the shot later on Javante Williams and hope that maybe he surpasses Melvin Gordon but unless of an injury I really don't think anyone's going to surpass anyone and we're just going to be stuck in a in a cycle of hell for the Denver Broncos running back. So some people are a little bit higher on Melvin Gordon than me, but frankly, I just I just don't really see it with this backfield. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know if you had any discrepancies to mind in this video. Maybe you think some of these takes are stupid. Let me know down below. Hit the dislike button. Fuck you, Nick. That's okay, but I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys have a great rest of your guys' day. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm recording this on Tuesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Happy Wednesday. I love you guys all. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys all from deep down in my heart. Make sure you guys stay safe, as always. Good boy.